evening. Welcome to Asaw Community Church, where serving and giving begins. We look to the author and finisher of our faith, Jesus Christ, who demonstrated the greatest example of service and sacrifice. We believe by following his example, we can unlock the abundance of this life and be assured about our glorious, boundless future. As we gather here today, we acknowledge the power of the triune God. We offer sincere praises to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We worship and adore the maker of the heavens and earth. Indeed, we collectively affirm. We desire godly change in our lives. We're expecting God to meet us here in a mighty way. We are determined to leave this place wiser, stronger, more joyful, and equipped with biblical truth to help us conquer the week ahead. We expect God's best, leaning on him for daily direction and resolving to renew our minds and surrender our hearts through his word. We long to understand the true posture of worship, the power of earnest praise, and the blessings of hearing the word of, and applying it to our lives. As we look around, we realize that serving the Lord is not confined to these walls. God gathers us here for instruction, but sends us out to share the message of reconciliation. Acceptance of the shed blood of Jesus, his death, burial, and resurrections are essential to abundance in this life and the next. We are here to win souls for Christ. Encourage those who do not know him personally and build up believers to accept Christ's call and live a purpose-filled life. Everyone is welcome here at ASAL Community Church where serving and giving begins. Praise the Lord, Esau. Glory to God. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Oh, we serve a great God. Hallelujah. I hope everybody had a happy Thanksgiving with your family, your friends. Hallelujah. I give thanks unto God. Because we're going to give thanks today. I want you all to join me if you can. If you know the song. Hallelujah. It's a simple song. It just says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. He is good. Yes, he is good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. For he is worthy, worthy, for he is good. Yes, he is good. For he is worthy. For he is good. 
for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. Jehovah Jireh, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being my provider, Lord. Oh, you're a mighty God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for being my Jehovah Rapha. Hallelujah, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being my healer, Lord. Thank you for healing my body. Lord, I just want to take the time out today to just say thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. I just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for healing my body, Lord. Thank you for healing my mind, Lord. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes we go through some things in life. Hallelujah. It can take your mind. But we need to learn how to keep our mind stayed on Jesus. There's no other, hallelujah. There's no other name I know that will deliver Hallelujah, that will deliver you out of any troubles that you go through in your life, whether it's divorce, whether it's death in the family, hallelujah, death of a love run. Hallelujah, I know how to call on the name of Jesus, and I know how to give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, he is good, hallelujah, thank you, Lord, yeah, I just want to thank you, Lord, I want to thank you you Lord hallelujah thank you
changing my life hallelujah i thank you lord for picking me up lord i thank you for healing my body lord because you are mighty god hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus hallelujah lord thank you lord thank you jesus oh hallelujah come on and get in the service with me y'all clap your hands clap your hands unto the lord hallelujah lord Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Can't nobody do me like 
like Jesus, can't nobody do it like the Lord, can't nobody do it like Jesus, he's mine, oh, hallelujah, can't nobody do it like Jesus, can't nobody do it like the Lord, can't nobody
nobody do me like Jesus. He's my friend. Oh yeah, yeah. He's my friend. Nobody like you, Lord. He's my friend. Hallelujah. He's my friend. Nobody like you, Lord. I need a tambourine. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. He's my friend. of your heart that you know that we are indeed connected to God. He's our friend. He's our father. He is all that we need in the time when something is needed. We can always go to the father. I am so thankful to have people that worship God in spirit and in truth thankful for what this music ministry has done to set the atmosphere for us to receive the word of God. So thankful for those who are here with us this evening, thankful for our members, thankful for our friends. There's something about the spirit of God when it moves, you just got to take your time. You got to take your time. And I'm ecstatic of what Debrosia Griffin allows God to use her to the utmost to fill her up and let whatever is filling up in her spill over into us that allows us to fill up. And so we're thankful for Debrosia, thankful for Mr. Gerard Black, thankful for his friend who I cannot remember your name, but Josh, good to have you here, Josh. You, listen, when people are talent who just sat in, and if I had known he wanted to play, I'd have had him playing earlier, but just to, just to jump in and just to bring that nucleus, God is pleased. So thank you, Josh. And I'm always grateful to have Mr. Teddy Wright with us. Thankful for his professionalism, his dedication to the cause, because all of these men and women allow God to use them to the utmost. So we're thankful. Father God, on this day, after we celebrated Thanksgiving, we're still thankful. Every day is Thanksgiving. Every day is Thanksgiving. But, but, but we're especially excited because the holiday season has started. I'm asking, Father, for safe traveling grace for those who are away, a visiting family and loved ones. We ask for safe travel, that they would go to and from and come back. We traveled this week, and I'm thankful for safe, safely arriving back home. Thankful for the word of God. Thankful for the people of God. Thankful for this church on this corner that is doing the assignment of what you have called us to be. You have called us to be people that go out and, and share the gospel and help those in need. And then we pray and turn them over to you for you to do the rest. So bless us now, Father, as we continue in this worship experience in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I am so thankful to be the pastor. My wife and I thank everyone who uh, prayed for us while we were away on our week's week-long journey. We had a great time visiting family across uh, Ohio and West Virginia, and the Lord uh, brought us back safely. And uh, while I was away, I was working on the sermon because that's part of the responsibility is, is to continue to hear from the Lord. And um, last week I started this message and it was entitled, It Comes With the Territory. And when my wife and I got home, she said, you should continue that. And, and, and I, I thought about it because that is, a, that is a statement that if you really pay attention to it, it should resonate with each and every one of us. There's some things in our lives and our journeys that just comes with the territory. You know, I'm always amazed that when people are surprised by what they should know or have already seen, 
and, and they get taken aback. What I mean by that is there's some, there's some characteristics that by now should be established that you should not be surprised. Anybody who knows me, including my wife who went with me to Ohio to see a cousin of mine, um, that my wife is her first time really meeting and being around. When we rang the doorbell at, at the time that we did, my cousin knew it was me because she said, he's always on time. It just comes with the territory with me. Time is just something that if you're around me, you understand that I value time. I value your time more than I value my own time. And so I want to be respectful of time. And, and so, so, so certain things about me, when you understand it, it just comes with the territory. And you shouldn't be shocked. And there's some things about each and every one of us that we got to get to understand. It just comes with the territory. And therefore, if you understand the territory or the playing field, you're not surprised, you're not shocked, or you're not, you're not put off. You just have to sometimes take a moment and analyze and realize that other people and other things are important. And therefore, you ought to pay attention so that you're not off guard, if that, if, that, if that makes sense, when we're dealing with people. So. so why are we surprised when we already know the action or the responses of people? Why, why are we surprised when we watch television and see people go back and forth and bicker amongst each other and never ever side whatever the issue is. They, they, are, they are entrenched in their belief and this person is entrenched in his. And, and so there should be no surprise that there's never a resolution because everybody is pushing for what they believe is right. We all, or, or let me take that back, maybe most of us internalizes the things that we experience and daily we are expecting an expectation of some sort each day each day whether you go to work and you're expecting to be paid for your job or, or whatever you're dealing with there is an expectation but you should know based upon your dealings what to expect and realize that whatever you are expecting could come with the territory so when my wife said, you should continue this, I said, okay. And I, and I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, well, what, what could I do to continue? Not so much part two or part three, but just a series of what, what does it mean to, to have things come with the territory? When you are to carry on a legacy, certain things come with the territory. You know, you know, Michael Jordan had a legacy, and when his sons played basketball, there were certain things that just came with the territory, meaning there were always going to be comparisons between the sons and the father predicated on the legacy. So if they get into the position where they're getting tired of being asked the same question, well, when your last name is Jordan and your father is Michael, there are just some things that just come with the territory. And it's no different in the Bible. There's no difference in the Bible. There are some things that, that just come with the territory. And I'm just, I'm just trying to set this up so you understand where I'm going, that, that it just comes with the territory. So you, 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 you shouldn't be shocked or you shouldn't be uh, uh, in, in awe of certain things. You've got to just understand that who you are, these are the things that come along with it. And when you understand it, then it's easier for you to navigate. Not, not saying that the situation is easy, but there is a confidence that you can navigate because you understand that this comes with that. And so that takes me tonight to John chapter 15, verses 18 to 21. John chapter 15, verses 18 through verse 21. And it says, if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Verse 20 says, remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. 
If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. But all these things they will do to you for my name's sake, because they do not know him who sent me. There are some things that comes with the territory. So let, let's set this up. Jesus is soon to be crucified. He leaves the assignment to do what? To spread the gospel with the apostles. He, he, he leaves them this assignment. But whenever you leave someone on assignment, you have to give them instructions. It's just like baking a cake. You can't just put all the ingredients on the counter and say, put it together and bake it. You have to give them some instructions, some, some things that, that you need to do first and what to look for and, and how to deal with certain elements. And, 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 and there's just some things that you have to, to share, to instruct for them to understand the assignment that is coming. Just like in baking their cake, Jesus has to give them the assignment and prepare them for what's about to come with the territory. And he starts off in verse 18 and he says, if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. So, so therefore, you can't be surprised at the hatred that's about to come your way for preaching and proclaiming the gospel based upon me. So, so, so going in, you got to already understand there are some challenges facing you. And I'm here to give you the instructions that, listen, they're going to hate you because they hated me first. Hatred towards you will only be displayed based upon the proportion of faith that you display. Meaning if you ain't showing nobody nothing, nothing is coming your way. If you're not proclaiming and professing anything, nothing is, is coming your way. If you're not singing to the glory of, of God, but you're singing for self, then there cannot be no exuberation in the spirit because we can see through you. But if you're singing to God, if you're singing because you really love him, if you understand the reason why you sing and the reason why you praise him, then guess what? Then there are going to be some haters because it just comes with the, with the territory. So he says to them, if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. It will be present based upon your walk, based upon your assignment. This hatred is going to be present. You are being hated, basically, you are being basically hated based upon the message you will share. Isn't that still prevalent today? Isn't that still prevalent today that when, when, whatever you see, whenever you contradict what you see that the world puts on display, that there's people that make you feel like you're the problem when in fact you're saying, don't y'all see that this is wrong? I, I, I mean, am I the only one that says this is wrong? But, but then again, then again, based upon how you have lived, they're looking at you like, well, why are you talking? Because you're just like us. So it says, if the world hates you, meaning it's going to, they're going to persecute you. Why? Because of the message you're carrying. Because the message you're carrying is life. Because the message you're carrying is light. Because the message you're carrying can change the course of the world. So guess what? I'm preparing you before I depart. That just like they did not like me, they will not like you. Because they will not accept truth. Sin runs rampant. If you don't think that sin is running rampant, just spend some time. Forget the show you are watching. Just look at the commercials between the show. Look at the things that our society has deemed worthy to be on television. Think about the imagery that you are seeing, that it is so daunting that some of us have become numb to what we are seeing. So if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. So guess what? Then there should be no surprise when you stand on righteousness. There should be no surprise when you stand on truth. Why? Because it comes with the territory. 
If the world hates you, you know that it hated me first. The one who came in love, look how he came. He came in love, he came to save, he came follow the instructions of the Father, he came as the example, and yet they hated him because he was just trying to do right. Haven't you found that in your life, in your journey, in your walk with your own family, always trying to do something that is right? And they look at you, here come Miss Goody Two-Shoe. Here comes, you get all of these nicknames other than worthy because of truth. When I was visiting my cousin, my wife and I were talking, and my nep I was visiting my nephew, and, and my nickname my cousin gave me was Truth Slayer Dream Crusher. Don't bring none of your dreams to Uncle Rodney. He will crush them. But I didn't never intend to crush the dream. What I did do is try to crush, crush the fallacy that was not really reality. In other words, my nephew thought he was going to go to the NFL. And I told him, I said, listen, man, I'm not here to, to bust your bubble, and I'm not trying to put something in the atmosphere that's not, but, but our family are not athletes. Our family are artistic. We are preachers and teachers, and we are musicians and poets. And, and, and how do you expect to get to the NFL when the only time you play football is between August and November, never touching it again? until the season starts the next year. That, 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 that road tells me that, that football and athleticism is, 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 not, is not the direction for you. But yet he's a master drummer. My nephew, the other one, is a guitarist. So I, I told him the truth and he said, when you shared that with me, although my mother was upset, for me, it gave me perspective. So what is happening? Well, when I come, into the room, there's certain things that come with the territory when you're around Uncle Rodney. He gonna tell you the truth. I'm not trying to put nobody down. I'm just trying to get you to see this is where you are. And if you're gonna pursue that, there's some things that come with the territory that I have not seen you engage in. The word of God says, if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. It is hating you because of the faith that you are standing on. It is hating you because it's, it's easier to hate to accept what I believe is right than to really engage in what's right. Think about it. The world, the world knows these things are wrong, but yet it's easier to go alone because more people like to live in darkness than in light. And then some of us that have lived in light still line up with some of the things that are in darkness. And so it really cuts your testimony when there's a track record of you not really fulfilling what you have said. We have to be a church about God's business. So therefore, the things that we profess and proclaim, we must live up to. There must be a track record based upon what we say we are. You can't say you about serving and giving and you have not helped anyone, have not given anything. Have, you, you got to... I'm just, I'm just trying to tell you that there's some things that just come with the territory, but you got to understand the truth and move in the direction that is pleasing to God. And if we do that, not only will we be all right, but those around us will be blessed. So Jesus is telling them, listen, they're going to hate you. They hated me. Verse 19, it says, and see, this is where a lot of people live right here. And verse 19 is where a lot, of, a lot of people live right here. If you were of the world, the world loves its own. That's what the word of God says. It says, if you are of the world, if you do not understand that Jesus has a, has a value in your life, you are part of the world. And it says, if you were of the world, the world would love it. And the world does. The world does. The world loves its own. You can agree that the world in it will embrace you. The world will. If you, if you feel displaced, there's some type of organization or some type of group that will embrace your, your philosophy or your, or your doctrine. But, but, but very few beliefs or, or, or groups predicate their movement on love as the church ought to be. The church ought to be. Even some of the church today is now coming up with their own
commandments that allow the world to be inclusive. Because it's all about inclusion. I'm telling you, inclusion will have some people in hell. I'm just telling the truth. Because there's inclusion and then there's the word of God. And the word of God says, this is sin. Let's separate from that. And if you're going to go out and give that message of separation because there is a disconnect between salvation and hell, there will be people protesting you because you're just coming in truth. And so he's preparing them as I am sharing with you that whatever we profess or proclaim, there's certain things that just come with the territory. So if you were of the world, the world would embrace you because pleasures of the flesh and the lust of life, they will love you because they can now agree that you are like them and there is no separation. There is no example and therefore they will embrace you into whatever it is they are doing. That's why today they are pushing the agendas out into the media to find people that will come along and collaborate with them. But we as Christians got to stand firm. There's some things in my house I just won't allow. If you are of the world, the world loves its own. Yet, because, talking to them, because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of what he's telling them. I chose you guys. I, I chose you because there was something about you that I chose. I chose you so that you can continue on the work after I'm gone based upon my legacy. I need you to continue the work, but you got to be prepared that there are some things that just come with the territory. See, the only way we can sit here freely right now and understand what God has done is because some people have already gone forward and, and planted that seed and somewhere down the line that seed got to you and then you grabbed a hold of it and now you're accountable just just like they are Amen. or just like they were we're to continue the work because you are not of the world so you are influenced by my principles you are different and whenever you are different people are going to talk about you they're going to make you feel like you're strange but what you have to do is hold on You are not strange when you understand your faith. It's when you don't understand it, you can be confused. See, a lot of people are led astray because they're really not connected to what they profess. I'm not easily persuaded. You know, I tell people all the time, there are two denominations that you see all the time, at least in my, my journeys that I see, and that's the uh, Jehovah's Witness and the Mormons. And a lot of times people say they just crazy. That's what they say. Jehovah's Witness come to your door. They say they just crazy. And I said, and I came to the understanding that they're not crazy. What it is is that whatever they believe, whatever their doctrine is, before they go out, they know it. It is embedded in them. The problem is when they knock on your door, since you don't really know yours and you kind of waver in it, then you just call them crazy. But if you understood yours, you can have a conversation. He says, I chose you out of the world. I'm choosing you to be my followers. I have separated you because there's an assignment that I am giving you. You have a position. You have a stance. You have some understanding of what it is that I, I came for, why I'm departing, where I'm going. And I need you to take all of that and operate under the word. Because he says right here, because you are not a word, but I chose you out of the word, that therefore the world hates you. I'm telling you they're going to hate you because you're going to go out and plant my word in the world and you got to understand back then people were going to prison people were being killed people were dying over this we're not even at that state here in America but you go to some countries and you 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 profess something like this you could be killed but if you go somewhere understand that it comes with the territory Verse 20 says, remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. 
If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they keep my word, they will keep yours also. See, Christ has to emphasize what he has shared regarding persecution. And the reason why you have to share so many things over and over with people is because sometimes we just don't get it on the first try. We don't get it the first, sometimes the second, sometimes the third. And that's why redundancy is the key. Redundant and always hearing it, it becomes a habit. It becomes something that now you connect to. You can't just hear it one time and run with it. Sometimes you got to hear it over and over. That's why you are building your faith. You're building because you're hearing it. And each time you hear it, it puts a new brick on that foundation. And as you get those bricks and that foundation becomes secure and firm, then you can battle that's why some people go through some things and sometimes they get through and then sometimes they revert back to the beginning it's not there's nothing wrong with that it's understanding i need more i need more i need more i need to keep building because there's some things in my life that i don't have a challenge with but there's some other areas in my life i got to keep hearing that over and over again to keep growing and keep growing stronger and so he says that i remember the word that i i said to you and then he tells him a servant is not greater than his master so 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 the way to teach Anybody, the way to teach is, is to teach about responsibility and understanding your position in the very thing that you are doing. A servant cannot be greater than the master, meaning, guess what? We are all here to serve who? The father. Our assignments are to serve, to share and to serve because the master has already put the mandate in the atmosphere as to what we are doing spread the gospel share the gospel along the way if they do this if they they do this understand what they're going to do to you because that's the leader they did this to me prepare yourself Prepare your mind. Every day, prepare your mind. Prepare your heart. I understand there are some challenges that come with this job. I was talking to a friend today about this. I said, I understand there are some challenges that come with pastoring people. But, but I, I, I believe that I have eliminated 50% of the heartache on leading people when I understand that my responsibility is to lead, my responsibility is to feed, and then the responsibility is then thrust into the hands of God. I can't save you. He can. All I can do is take his instructions and give it to you. But you got to figure out where to apply this in your life. People say, you should always be available for people to call you at 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm asleep. Call God. I'll call you back. Well, what kind of pastor are you that you don't take the phone call? Because he's always on duty. But you got to understand the faith that you have. You got to understand your prayer life. You got to understand what comes with the territory. Remember the word I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. In the world, if the world doesn't respect the Lord, what do you think they will do to you? I, I do this as a joke. I said the only reason they take out the taxes first is because they know if they paid you, if you don't give the father his, you don't concern yourself with your uncle. So therefore, Uncle Sam take his money out and he don't take a tithe. He take whatever he deemed necessary based upon the work that you've done. The father said, just give me what's in your heart. So, so, so again, you gotta understand the world. And the world understands the word better than you because they'll take that word and use it against you. The servant is not greater than the Lord. If there is no respect for the leader, the followers are in trouble. See, it's hard for you to follow if you have no respect for leadership. You don't. I think that's why so many families are damaged right now because there is a leader, but the family doesn't respect the leader. So therefore, whenever there's no respect for the leader, there is rebellion. And whenever there's rebellion, there's chaos. So whenever there's chaos, Satan can swoop in and divide. So he's telling them, 
that the servant is not greater. So guess what? So, so, so what am I supposed to do? J -j just follow. Follow. Hear the instructions. Follow and understand what's necessary in following. I've already done the hard work for you. All I'm asking you to do is continue the work that I've already done. I've already paid the price. Well, I'm about to pay the price. All I need you to do is to continue to move forward and understand that at the end of all of this is an inheritance. Don't you understand? Just keep moving forward in the assignment. Every day, whenever you get up, it's not going to be a bed of roses, but you got to understand there's certain things based upon your faith, based upon your commitment, based upon your confession that just comes with the territory. You're going to be attacked because you're trying Trying to live for him so if they persecuted him why don't you think they're going to persecute you why do you think it's going to be different for you than it was for the savior of the world certain things in life come with the territory you have to understand the message you are carrying and be willing to submit truly understand the father and his rule his role in your life that's your responsibility that ain't the deacons that ain't the pastor that ain't the praise and worship leader it is you this whole journey is you you got to find out where you are in the journey you got to figure out whether or not you can sustain your can can can, can stand in the face of adversity or you crumble every time somebody says boo So what, what does all this mean? Like, 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 like really, like, like a message. What does a message really mean? There's a title. The title is it comes with the territory. There are some verses. And then you start explaining and teaching the verses. And while you're hearing this, somewhere in your mind, you should be thinking, wow, yes, got it. Need to do that more. Need to stand firmly on that. Need to agree with that. Need to change that. Need to fix that. That's what this does. And it keeps building. See, he's building the case. He's building the case for them. And there's more to it. I believe a message should just be your intro. You should go back and read the whole chapter and, and find know what happens at the end of this and then flip the page because then it gives you a clearer perspective and when you have a clear perspective you have a better understanding and when you have a better understanding you have a better foundation so it says let, let me just recap this so we're going to go down to the climactic part of all of this it says if the world hates you you know that it hated me before it hated you we got that if you were of the world the world loves its own we got that all of us here are not of the world why because we have separated based upon our confession so we're still building and then he goes and gives it to you simply he says because you are not of the world but I chose you out of the world he's talking to them at that particular time but now it is transferred over to us upon your confession you are now separated from the world if you have done it if you believe that Jesus died for you rose and you believe in your heart boom you're not a part of this world because guess what the world does not have an inheritance only those who know the father and the son for themselves have this inheritance so he goes on to say remember the word I said to you meaning he was already teaching them see again if he's teaching them he's already shared this it's about redundancy he's telling them again because if he says remember that means he's already shared that persecution comes with the journey he says remember the word I said to you a servant is not greater than his master if they persecuted me they will also persecute you he says if they keep my word meaning the world if they keep my word they will keep yours also what is the word meaning the word that he taught them if they keep my word they will keep yours because all you're doing is repeating my word to a dying world that's where we are everybody with me everybody understands where we are we're at this point where here comes the climax in verse number 21 verse number 21 says but all these things they will do to you for whose sake my name's sake because of who I am. All these things, meaning everything in verse 18 and 19 and 20, all these things they will do to you for my name's sake because of what? What is the one thing they will do this? Here's the thing. Here's the reason. Because they do not know him who sent me. 
That's why the world is so jacked up. They don't know who created all this. They don't understand who sustained this. They don't understand who God really is. So when you don't know who God really is, you act like the world and it embraces its own because the world is jacked up. So all Jesus is telling them and what I am sharing with you is because of who you are, because of what you believe, this comes with the territory. Stop being afraid. Stop being fearful. Stop letting the enemy use you when you have a God that's bigger than all of them it's in you but you gotta stand on it you gotta know it you gotta build it you gotta believe it because all these things they will do to you for my name's sake but they do not know who sent me so here's the key for any of this thing to happen to you you got to know him and then it won't it won't even come your way why because when it's coming you can push through it because you know you serve in the father that's what we got to do that's what we have to believe that's what we have to stand on and if we do that no weapon formed against us can prosper because we are more than god bless you and may heaven smile upon you Verse number 21 says it all. Because they do not know him who sent me. In case I was just caught up in that moment and I maybe have misspoke, let me go back and just read what I had written. Here's the key for any of this to happen. We must be united. We have to be. The church has to be united. The, the foundation of belief has to be united. I, 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 I think that the reason why so many people go through what they go through is because they need a better understanding of him. And you better get an understanding of his representation in your life for yourself. That's the key. You got to know this for yourself. So you need to know the Father. And when you are in Christ, there are things that come with the territory. The doors of the church are open. You know what, listen, a message is a message until you apply it. Then it becomes life. That's when it becomes life. When you hear it and you can apply it, then it becomes life because now you can, you can rest your life on it. You can share it with others, improve their lives by the understanding that you have. But if you don't have no understanding, then your conversation... Cause that's how we share this message say conversation the people that i've met I, I just meet them in passing that's it i just meet people in passing i just share a word you know my wife and i we were with some people yesterday and you know don't don't talk to me about family don't talk about this don't hey you bring up the subject about family and roles and relationships hey i hey i dig deep and i know the first three minutes into the conversation i could see that his wife was like huh she was trying to say that the husband, if they want to have kids, he should stay home with the children. What? Well, what? Hey, heck no. <laughs> well, what if, what if that's the plan and I, that's the wrong plan? And I even shared with her, I said, let me tell you something. Now, I don't know about you women. I, I don't know, especially LaDonna, because the LaDonna's built differently. But women that I have met in my life, women that I have met in my life have cried on the job, Mr. Fry. They've cried on the job, they cried about the job. Something about the job had, had them crying. At some point, not every day, David Fry, in your years of working, have you ever cried on the job about a job? Nope. But what I was trying to explain to her was that leave a man home with three kids. We can't multitask. 
You know how we multitask? Sit down! And you better not move again so I can go do something else. But women can talk on the phone, be starting dinner, tell the kids, move over there, check homework. That's all I'm saying. They ain't never cried about that. And they might have cried over some children's actions, but they ain't cried about that. So all I'm saying is, that's what I tried to explain. I kind of backtracked a little bit, tried to ease it up for them, but then they threw me another alley-oop. Just like I'm going to do with Gerard when we get on that dag on a basketball court. He talking trash early. You can do all that you want. We, I'm going to beat you, and then we're going to come back and let you testify. <laughs> he talking about, he talking, hey, I, hey, look, I can dig, I, hey, I'm going to bag it up. Matter of fact, if he even start winning, I'm going to pull a hamstring and walk off. <laughs> Here at ASAR Community Church, if you want to be a member, all you have to do is uh, fill out this card. That's it. Fill it out. It's simple. Hey, you know, something moved me. I want to be a part of what you guys are doing. I'm going to fill this out and answer the questions. Every Tuesday night at 7 o'clock is our Bible study. I believe our Bible study is unique because it's a conversation. It's called Tuesday Town Hall because I expect you to engage or be a part of or share your experience or your questions or your understanding. And, and sometimes we're all on the same page and sometimes we're not. And it's okay. My wife said to me, she said, well, I didn't want to ask that question because I think we were moving, moving forward. I'm like, I don't care about no movement. We'll stop and answer that one. I don't care because I need everybody to understand. And sometimes everybody's not going to agree. I get it. Do the best you can. And whatever you can live with, you live with. I'm cool with it if you're cool with it. When it comes to giving here at ASAR Community Church, we believe that whatever the Lord has laid um, in your heart. That's what you should do. Now I'm going to say this because I've been dealing with this. If you don't sow, you can't expect. Period. That's good or bad. Good or bad. If you don't sow, you can't expect. There's no harvest coming. If all the seeds are in your pocket, there's nothing coming. Nothing. Zero. Because all the seeds are in your pocket. I don't care if you plant one out of a thousand. I don't care. It's up to you. Giving blesses you. Now I'm dealing with people who, um, who uh, um, are losing jobs, got laid off of jobs, or got fired from jobs. Now the first thing I do as the pastor is I, I go back and check the, the giving. And I go, it comes with the territory. Let, let me say that again. There's certain things that just come with the territory. If your seeds are in your pocket, it comes with the territory. So when I go back and I look at people who are doing well because they have given. Remember, giving blesses you first. It's your responsibility to give God what he's already blessed you to have. Well, I don't have enough to make it. Well, the reason why you're in the situation is not that the God didn't supply your needs. It was the choices you me now you want to penalize God you should penalize that credit card company but the credit card company ain't blessing you but again I'm just saying I'm dealing with that and my answer is always gonna be the same look at your giving when you are struggling in life look at your giving if you can honestly say you ain't done nothing in three months six months nine months twelve months understand that no harvest is coming it comes with the territory so I just tell people just just give don't get all caught up with tithing and trying to give 10%. Tithing just means 10%. So you can be a by tither That's 20%. Whatever. Try tithing. I don't care. Don't get caught up in the title. Get caught up in honoring God for what he's done for you. And watch him do the things that he does. That's it about giving. Now you can go to um, asawcc.org. Or you can give here with the envelopes and put it in the container. We'll record it. And at the end of the year, you'll get your statement. All right, gentlemen, you think I'm done right there. Oh. Falling in love. That's it. <laughs> That's my song there. He gonna take us out on that. Falling in love. That's what we need to do. If you fall in love with Jesus, man, come on. If you fall in love with Jesus,
Terrell is going to take us out in prayer. Father God, we just give you all glory. We give you all praise. Thank you for the praise and worship on tonight. Bless those, Father God. We thank you for your word, Father God, that came from Pastor, Father God. Let your word dwell in us, Father God. Lord, we thank you just for the fellowship, for us being together on tonight, Father God. You deserve all the glory and all the praise on tonight. Please be with us as we leave this place, but never from your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. What's my note? In his arms. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love Falling in love With Jesus Is the best thing I If you don't know the words, just hum along Ever done Maybe I should be the backup. Come on now, come on now. This is, I'm going to be the Kirk Franklin here. Mm, in his arms. Come on, Teddy, help me out. In his arms. Place I'd rather, rather be. Maybe that's what I do. I just be behind you. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love. I ever, ever done, ever done. The best thing I've ever oh, the best thing was the best thing I've ever, I've ever, the best thing I've ever, oh, the best thing I've ever, oh, the best thing I've You know what, y'all come up here and make it do what it do. You know what I'm saying? One time. Hey, 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 that's what I'm talking about. Who told y'all how to do that? Ray! <laughs> Rocky! That, that, that's right, that's right, that's right. Hey, hey, you know what, go ahead on and play us on home, man. We gonna play it on home, baby. You know what I'm saying? You know, I love these people, man. Yeah. 